Um, great, so we'll start with the first, first slice I shared, so it's Maria. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Maria, she came from Paris, so she, she invented the technology behind the gecko biomedical, so when she was at the MIT in uh, Bob Langer's lab. And now the company has raised over 30 million euro, including from some really big investors like Sophie Nova in Paris. Um, and basically what they're doing is inventing the post-it for surgery. Uh, so basically a glue that replaces stitching. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of applause for Maria. <laughs> It would sit half an hour, it's quite long. So. Okay. <laughs> we can survive. <laughs> so, I guess, I mean, my first question is like, it's a huge, it's a huge, quite low, it's a huge promise, like, posted for surgery, like, I mean, would be, like, really groundbreaking, would change a lot of things. Um, but actually, the great thing is that it's not just on paper. I mean, you ju you're already in the clinics, pretty advanced, but, so how advanced are you? So, um, so we, Gecko, so we started in 2013 um, <laughs> uh, in Paris. Uh, of course, our first and second year was all the industrialization of the material, uh, doing the GLP work to be able to start uh, to, to reach the clinics. Yeah. And we have reached the clinics last year with our first mm -hmm. product, uh, which is in the vascular space. Um, and we'll have more news this year about it. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and how is the, the market access for such a glue? Is it like... You just need a CE mark and then in the market, or do you need to do any more like longer clinical trials? Yeah, for Europe, yeah, we we are it's the the CE mark, and it's exactly the clinical trial that we we have started last year. It's exactly to support the CE mark. Okay. Um, of course, in parallel, we have started uh, discussing with the FDA, so yeah. we are preparing to also start our clinical trial in the US in the coming months, uh, because of course the idea is to be a global player and to to have access also to that to, to that market. Okay. And uh, just can all of you hear well? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so I guess, I mean, when I look at medtech companies, usually the CE mark is, is not the most difficult to get. Like, mm -hmm. it seems like it's just to start like, the beginning of the troubles, let's say. Like, <laughs> like then how do you get reimbursement? Uh, yeah. How would it work for you? Yeah, so of course you need to, so the, the product that, uh, that, that we are first developing will be on the surgical bundle price. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's what we are looking for. And I agree with you that CMARC, it's, it's a first step. Yeah. I think it's a good, uh, I, will not, I don't like to, to use the wording of te tech, but it's a little bit like your beta testing, right? It's yeah. when you, you start getting more clinical feedback, um, you, you, you start to better get data on your product. Yeah. And that will then support you the future designs of your study. That's exactly what we are doing. It's uh, when we're thinking about U.S. trial. Of course, it's a, it's a much larger trial um, yeah. with the, with the both demonstration of safety and efficacy. And that's uh, that's exactly uh, we are using our clinical data from 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 the Europe to support the, the future developments. Okay, and I mean, I guess you're well founded, but do you plan to partner with a bigger medtech company to get in the market? Yeah, I think that will be that's one of the options. Of course, it's okay. to for in terms of uh, sales distribution. Of course, we would like to partner with a okay. with a big player uh, to have a, to have access to the market because of course it's a, it's surgical specialties and uh, you have many many surgeons around uh, yeah. and so that's <laughs> definitely wor working with a large player that can uh, that can work on have all the sales and distributions will be a preferred option for us. You already have talks with them. There's discussions. <laughs> <laughs> of course, when you are in a company like ours, I think it's something that you start working on from the start, right? It's not something that you you wait for your approval to to get done. So definitely, there's discussions Who? going. Uh, <laughs> 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 that is too much information. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, and and um, I mean, it's more more turning to the to the financial side. I mean, 30 million in three years for for a medtech company in Europe. It, it's it's quite a lot. I mean, I, I don't know that many others who raised like this, this sum. Um, how, how did you get like these large financings? So I think, um, how did you get it? Well, you speak with people <laughs> and, you <laughs> and you convince them it's a good idea. I think first, of course, you need to have a, a good technology and you need to have uh, good data to support it. Yeah. I think uh, that's, that's, that's super important. That th and that was work that was started at MIT. Yeah. So when we started Gecko, we already had some Pre solid preclinical uh, proof of concepts, and that yeah. was definitely critical for our 
for our round A that we did in 2013, that was yeah. around 8 million. Um, and I think from there, I think um, the team that came together and the fact that we were able to demonstrate that, you know, it was not just a, a, a lab product, right? It's something that we could industrialize, that uh, we were able to show the efficacy, the safety yeah. in animal models. Of course, putting that in a quite a fast period of time, yeah. of course, gave confidence to the to the to future investors that, that it was the right technology and the right team to, to bring things forward. Okay. And I think... Um, one of our goals, of course, it's uh, so we have our first product, that's a vascular yeah. sealant, but of course the idea is to, to expand the pipeline because we, we see there's, you know, surgical procedures are very diverse and we have uh, identified several opportunities where we think there, be, there will be interest to use our, our materials and we are really excited about that. It's, uh, you know, it's um, when you have something that can be really a platform, I think it's, 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 it's fun because you can really see how many things um, yeah. you can do, but at the same time, of course, it has the challenges of net not getting of not spreading yourself too thin, yeah. and that's exactly you know the right balance that we we try to 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 take in consideration on our daily basis to make sure we are tackling the right problems, uh, and and making and sure that that we are able to to yeah. use our resources to generate meaningful data. And and the vision is like to build up a standalone company with commercial forces, or is it like to exit faster? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can give many details. The, the, the objective is, well, at this stage, is not a fast exit. We want to okay. believe on the technology. We want to, to grow. We want to partner with the right people yeah. uh, to, to be able to bring this to the market and to, to, give, a, to give access to, to patients uh, mm -hmm. so the patients can access technology. So we, that's, that's part of the strategy. It's not just to, you know, let's get one product done and, and sell it. It's, uh, it's not just that. We want to grow. We see potential. Okay. And we want to maximize that potential and the value that we can generate out of it. Until you get a good offer. Sorry? Until you get a good offer. <laughs> <laughs> well, until things, things are not on the table, they are not on yeah. the table, right? So. Until it's signed, it's not, yeah, nothing is done. Um, and I guess, I mean, the funny thing about your fundraising, you raised the Series A and then a Series A too. Yeah. Uh, so... When is the Series B? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a strict timeline for that, but of course, as a startup, you are always looking for um, for the next step, right? So um, it will happen when it has to happen. <laughs> so you have some and in the right timing. <laughs> you have some meeting with investors. In, I mean, in Basel, you have a lot of, of biotech investors. Eh? Yeah, there's a lot. Currently, our ma uh, ma the majority of our investors currently they are French, so yeah. from Sofinova to to BPI to to other um, investors. But of course, as Wanting to be a global company, there's always opportunities to 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 look for investor investors outside. Okay. That's great, and and I guess one one of the impress. I mean, we we uh, you, you sent me a, a slide on on like your scientific founders. It's it's quite impressive. I mean, you you were in, in Bob Langer's lab. You know, how many of you know Bob Langer? <laughs> oh, so so he's the most uh, cited engineer in the world. He's like professor at the Koch Institute at the MIT. He's like over a thousand patents. He founded over a hundred companies. I mean, he's like rock star guy in, in, <laughs> in, in, <laughs> in Boston. Um, and you have Jeff Karp, who's like yeah. so professor. Jeff Karp my, my direct uh, supervisor, and then okay. we, we, we worked with Bob Langer. Okay. Um, how is it to work with these kind of guys? Like, Inspiring. So they are in the si they are scientific <laughs> advisors of the of yeah, the company. They are scientific co-founders. Yeah, and uh, I think it was very inspiring. So I'm I'm Portuguese, um, and uh, so I'd, when I started my PhD, um, I always wanted to you know follow a little bit entrepreneurial route. And yeah. having had the opportunity to go to to Boston to MIT, I think it's really a city that uh, opens your eyes of what is out there and the excitement people have around not just about doing science, but also extracting the value that comes out of that science. Yeah. I think it's really inspirational. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, Bob, I think, is the perfect example that you can be a great scientist and at the same time be able to, you know, to think strategically on, on how to design meaningful technologies that can imp have impact op to on patients and that really can, can create value out of it. So yeah. I think he's uh, inspiring, let's say. <laughs> how often do you talk with him? Um, with Bob, normally when I go to Boston, I, yeah. I speak with him, uh, so it normally twice a year, something okay. like that. Well, with Jeff, uh, almost every week, I'll okay. say. <laughs> we, keep, keep we keep very close contact. I think Jeff, uh, you know, if I had to attribute the root cause of my success so far, it's yeah. definitely to the mentors that I had the opportunity to, to work with. And I think Jeff, Bob, uh, now Christoph at Keiko, mm. I think definitely they are the, you know, the responsible for that. <laughs> yeah. 
that's 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 great. I mean, I, I spent one year in Boston as well, and it's it's really really inspiring. Uh, but we can you to go to go there as well for biotech. It's really amazing. Um, and I guess I had a question on how MIT changed your your vision of biotech. I guess. Yeah. So I, how long you stayed at, at MIT? So I stayed there for three years. Yeah. So I did um so I did a program that is called the MIT Portugal program. That was yeah. at the time a collaboration between the Portuguese government and uh, and MIT. Yeah. Um, that is now well, it started ten years ago, and it's still uh, it's still an ongoing program. So I stayed there for three years, and um, you know. Every, every time I go to Boston, it's incredible how, I went to Boston in 2009, yeah. and it's incredible how Boston, at the time it was already big and uh, exciting with all the companies around, all the you know, great science, great technology, great mindset. And I think even over the last few years, you really see an evolution in Cambridge that uh, mm. uh, you know, with all the biotech scene increasing and changing and, and it's... Uh, so, so why didn't you stay there? <laughs> so, um, so first I'm European. So, you know, I think there's there's great science in Europe, and uh, I think there's a lot of potential that yeah. I think it needs to be better explored. I yeah. have to be to be very frank, but I think there's there's huge potential. Um, and so, first because I'm European, and also because of the opportunity because of Gecko itself. So, um, so. Gecko, I can say that for me, Gecko started in 2012 yeah. uh, when I met, m first met uh, Christoph Pencel, which yeah. is our current CEO, and Bernard Gilly, yeah. which is our chairman. Um, so Bernard, so he's a serial entrepreneur in, uh, so he's very well known. So he's a serial entrepreneur in uh, in Europe. Um, he's currently, well, uh, he currently started Dibionex in Paris, yeah. which uh, is a kind of a growth fund for for startups. And um, so when I met him, I think. It's one of those things when you meet people early and they get exactly, you know, we pitched, so I was with Jeff, we pitched them the technology and they got it very, very early and mm -hmm. they wanted to, you know, to bring the technology to France, to, the, to do the fundraising and, and start Gecko Biomedical. So I think, um, so that's the reason why Gecko is in Paris, it's, that's the first one. It's yeah. for personal relationships and the people that really got the vision from the start. Okay. Um, and the but you didn't have anyone in, in Boston who had the same like believe in the technology. I mean, in the, on the VC side. Honestly, for me, it was the first people I spoke with uh, okay. at the time when we were speaking about the technology. So, um, so I think they got it from the start. We were okay. early at the time. We hadn't published anything uh, when when we first met. We published uh, the year after. Yeah. Uh, of course, when you publish and you, that's when you start to get traction. But I think they were really able to get things very very early, which yeah. is uh, I think it's. Uh, says a lot about their qualities of, of okay. getting new ideas and pitching and uh, adopting new technologies. Um, and, uh, and then we are, I think the another reason to be in Europe, it's because we are a med tech company. And I think for the C mark, even though, as you said, it's, it's, a, it's a first step. Yeah. Um, I think it's always, it's always favorable if you start in, uh, in Europe, uh, where you normally, where all the company, med tech companies end up starting their clinical trials to have okay. your operations here. And so it was, it made sense, it made sense at the time. Okay. Yeah, that's I think right. it continues making sense because in the end we are not doing that bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, and so, so I guess you still have plans, like opening office or going to the US as one. Well, like, I mean, not just doing the trial, I guess. Yeah, at some point I think it makes sense when you you want to be a global company, right? I think it makes sense that you you tackle the geographies that. Uh, where you want to expand. So that's, um, to be honest, of course, it was something that was already discussed. It may happen in the future. We'll see. All right. That's great. Do you have any questions so far? Oh, you have questions for sure. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> who, wants to, who, wants to, who wants to start one? Don't be shy. <laughs> she doesn't buy it. It's no. fine. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, so I, I would just repeat for the mic. So the, for the first trial, which tissue are you going after? So we started on the vascular, uh, for vascular reconstruction, um, as it is done to sutures in, um, in, uh, in vascular surgery. So that was the, our, first, uh, our first trial is on, on that setting. Maybe why, why? Why is this tissue? So because there's a good market, there's a clear clinical need because there's no products that are efficient on okay. this setting and also because the pathway is quite uh, it's quite established so it was easy to to in terms of clinical trial design to show the efficacy and uh, and the performance of the product and the safety because mm -hmm. what's the existing for this specific like so what's the existing product yeah so currently people use uh, for example they have the um, 
to stop bleeding mm -hmm. in vascular surgery. Currently, you can use some hemostats yeah. uh, for the cellulose. The problem is that they take a lot of time to, to have an effect. Mm -hmm. And with our case, um, the, the objective is to have a, an immediate hemostase that as soon as the anastomosis is done, apply the product and have immediate hemostase so that you can, uh, you can have a reduction in the, in the surgical time. Okay. Uh, so who do you consider as your major competitors? Like, are there any uh, other biotech companies <coughs> that are looking at similar technology? Yeah, there are other companies developing a disease on sealants. So I think what, uh, what um, perhaps we haven't explained, it's so the core difference of Gecko's technology, it's not just about being an adhesive, it's about being an adhesive that is... Uh, designed to for minimal invasive surgery. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the core difference. So currently, the current sealants and adhesives you have in the market, you apply them in the tissue and they immediately start to polymerize. So the sur surgeon has absolutely no control over the delivery, over what will happen to mm -hmm. it. So as soon as it's applied, there's nothing else you can do. It starts to polymerize. So in our case, the way we designed the material um, was exactly to, to be able to be applied in, in minimal invasive surgery. And that's where we are designing our path, path to go. So why we can tackle minimally invasive surgery? Because the material, it's light activated. So mm -hmm. you can deliver it to the tissue. Uh, it's a viscous material, it's hydrophobic, so it doesn't uh, mix with blood, for example. And once it's on the right location, the clinician can just shine light uh, on, the, on the material and activate the adhesion. And so from a control perspective, from a usability perspective, this enables um, minimally invasive procedures by giving this kind of control to the surgeon. So he has time to do what he wants to do and then activate the material to, to cause the defect. So what are the other companies? Oh, in terms of Can companies, so companies that are developing sealants, uh, startups, uh, you have, for example, a company that was uh, just bought by Grunenthal, but they are really early stage. It's, um, they're called, currently they are, co they were called Medical Adhesive Revolution and they changed their name. Uh, now they are called Adhesis. Mm -hmm. So they are a German company um, and uh, they were just bought by Grunenthal. Um, and uh, other companies um, are, for, for example, Koyura, which is a U.S. company, and they have developed um, surgical glue for abdominoplasty. So it's, it's not only an adhesive, but it's also something that absorbs fluids to stop edema. So these are the kind of companies that are appearing on the adhesive space, tackling different, uh, different uh, surgical yeah. scenarios. Mm -hmm. And uh, our core competitive advantage is exactly the, the control and, uh, and uh, compatibility with minimally invasive surgery. That's something that none of the other competi competitors has. Yeah, go on. Um, how big can be the surface uh, treated with your technology? So, so how big can be the surface treated with your technology? Yeah, um, we don't have a, a limitation. I think so you can be, so I don't know if your question is related to the, the fact that you need to activate with light, that you need yeah, to cover a large surface area. area. Yeah, so that's always a, a, a question that, that <laughs> it's, it's raised. So it's really... So first, the material activates very quickly. So you just need a very few seconds to, to activate the, 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 the adhesive. <coughs> it's not a long-term process. It's really very quick. Um, and then currently, you know, LED technology is quite advanced. So in the way, it, in terms of designing optics to be able to spread your light to, to cover a large area, there's a lot of smart ways of doing that. So um, we don't, I cannot say we have a specific limitation at this stage. Yeah. Can you tell us something about your cost of production? How costly and difficult it is to produce your glue and your scales? Yeah, so... Mm. so cost, cost of production and how complicated it is to scale the process. Yeah, sorry, I, ca I cannot give many details, <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, we know that we are in a field that, you know, it's a, a bundle, it's the price will be on the bundle of the surgery, so you need to be pay attention in terms of your cost. And of course, we design our processes having that in mind and to, to have a reasonable cost of goods, of course. But I cannot give many more <laughs> details. <laughs> but <laughs> you're competitive. Sorry? Competitive pricing, yes, of course. Yes, that's the objective. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you are out of the business, yeah. I would say. <laughs> and how does it work for the reimbursement? Then? Like so it's on the bundle of the surgery. So mm -hmm. it's a surgical, it's like, for example, the way clinicians buy sutures or buy these kind of devices. There's okay. a price for the surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can opt to 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 okay. to include this in your in your bundle. Yeah, you have to first year then. Think, uh, over the distribution. Sorry. You, the distribution will you make it on your own or? How will you do the distribution?